Okay, welcome back to FTL Easy Mode. Uh, when we last left off, I had just finished up exploring Sector 2 and was just about to jump out of there before the Rebel Fleet caught up with me, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright, here we have the option of either going through another Engi-controlled sector or checking out the Uncharted Nebula. Let's go to the Nebula. I don't like Nebulas, but I should probably show it off. Here we can see we're surrounded by clouds, and if you look down here on the right, our sensors are disabled. Uh, that is one thing that is present whenever you go through a nebula, uh, either a, a whole sector that's a nebula, la, <laughs> sorry, nebula like this, or just little bits and pieces of nebula that may be scattered elsewhere. Um, here we can see there's a store right nearby, but I don't have a ton of scrap, so I'm going to jump to a couple other places before I go to the store. You generally want to build up as much scrap as you can before you head to a store, because you never know what it'll have. It could have nothing, or it could have some fantastic thing that costs 150 scrap, like cloaking or something like that. So, nothing in this sector. Let's keep jumping around. Here we uh, come across a pirate that's trying to hide. We hate pirates, so we're going to attack him. Uh, we can see he has a missile launcher and a laser, but with cloaking, I'm not too worried about the missile launcher. As I demonstrated earlier, it's very easy to dodge missiles with it. So we're going to cloak. Our missiles missed, so hopefully... Yeah, there we go. I was able to take out all of his weapons with that one burst from the lasers, so now I can just retarget my lasers on his shields without worrying about taking any more missiles to the face, because you can see the uh, cloaking has a pretty long cooldown, and enemies will generally be able to get off multiple missile shots before you can uh, recharge your cloak. He's offering us a pretty wimpy reward for letting them live, but also they're pirates, they're jerks, so we're going to keep hitting them. You generally get more scrap for destroying ships than you do from accepting their surrender, but sometimes they'll offer you really good surrender options, like, oh, 35 scrap and a weapon, or something like that. And in that case, I'll take it. But most of the time, I don't accept surrender. See, there we got some fuel, some missiles, but more importantly, we got a much more scrap, more than double what they offered us to let them live. So with, with 96 scrap, let's go check out that store now. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Here we actually have a couple. We have two of my favorite weapons in the game. Uh, the Burst Laser 2, which is one of the weapons we start out with, which is wonderful, and having two of them is incredible. Uh, the Pike Beam is a beam weapon, which is very good. Um, we've also got a Scrap Recovery Arm down here, which gives you 10% more scrap whenever you collect it, which is amazing over the course of a game. And we're doing okay on fuel and missiles, and we're not even using drones, so I don't need more drone parts right now. So what I'm going to do is, to get a little bit more cash, I'm going to sell that hull laser that we haven't used yet. I'm going to buy the burst laser too, and we are too scrap short of that scrap recovery arm, and I really want it. So what I'm going to do is, since I know it's there, I'm going to make a couple more jumps, because I think I can get back to that store before the Rebel Fleet cover it up. And hopefully, at that point, I'll have enough scrap that I can buy that scrap recovery arm. Uh, come across some mantis that are letting us leave, but they're jerks. I don't like mantis. They're huge jerks, so we're going to blow them up. Aha, but you can see they've sent boarders onto our ship. Uh, this can potentially be a problem if you don't have a lot of crew, but since I've got a rock man who has 150 hit points and this crystal guy who has 125, I should be able to keep them tied up. Oh, that missile hit me even though I cloaked. Cloaking is not 100% accurate, at least until you get your engine upgraded a few times. And you can see here I'm having to keep track of a lot of things. My my Engi is repairing my shields, I'm targeting various weapons at their ship, and I've got dudes fighting guys on my ship. So you really have to get good at multitasking in this game if you want to get good at it. You can see my crystal guy is getting very low on health. So I'm going to send him over to the med bay, which, it reminds me, I should probably turn on because I'm in the middle of a fight. And I'm going to send my captain back over there to keep the mantis occupied. My goal here isn't necessarily to kill these mantis before I blow up the enemy ship, as it is just to keep them occupied without killing any of my dudes while I take care of the ship. Because the ship is the greater threat right now. You can see both of my guys are getting low on health right now, so I'm just going to have them run off. The 
Mantis will focus on destroying my piloting, but since their enemy ship is basically sitting dead in the water at this point, I'm not too worried about that. You can see they've moved on to my sensor room, but with the enemy ship destroyed, they actually teleported right back to it just before it blew up. Uh, the AI is funny sometimes. Uh, it, what happened there was that uh, they saw that their ship was super low on health, so they teleported back to frantically try and repair it before I blew it up, but they teleported back just in time for me to blow it up with them on it. So that threat's been taken care of. And with that spare Angie crew member fixing up my piloting controls, I am all set to jump back to that store and buy that scrap upgrade. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, one thing, oh, I'll get to that in a minute. Here we go. Uh, we've run into a sector that is being beset by a plasma storm. What these plasma storms do is they automatically take out a little bit less than half of whatever your total power is. Uh, so we've lost about, we've lost five units of power. Uh, we can't run a lot of our systems. Uh, normally we would have to fight, but because we have cloaking, we have this blue option to just cloak and escape. Fighting in plasma storms is very dangerous, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to avoid the fight, do a little bit of power juggling, and jump out of there. Alright, now that we've hit an empty sector, I want to talk a little bit about upgrading. Uh, specifically the order that you want to upgrade your ship in. Um, there's not really a hard and fast rule as to, like, you have to buy this first, or you have to buy that next. Um, generally, you're going to want to upgrade your shields first, uh, but there are some exceptions, like if you've come across really good weapons early on or something like that. Uh, but you generally want to at least get to two bars of shield power by, like, the second or third sector, as we've done. Um, after that, it's generally a good idea to start upgrading your weapon system so you can use more weapons. But because I had saved up so much scrap and it was available, I spent all of that money on buying cloaking instead. Because cloaking is nearly mandatory for the end of the game, and I might as well buy it early on and then not have to worry about it for the rest of the game. Also, it's really useful even in the regular game as well. It's great for dodging missiles and it gives you all these extra options in other events. So it's just good to have all around. Since I could afford it, I thought I'd get it. I'd get it. My next upgrade path is probably going to be to start putting more points into weapons and keep powering up my reactor because I've got the second set of burst lasers here that is going to be absolutely wonderful. Um, I actually have, with the weapon loadout right here, I could beat the final boss. I've done it before with this layout. Um, so double burst lasers is just really, really good. Anyway, moving on, let's jump over here. And here we have another automated ship. This one doesn't even have shields, so I don't have to worry about really anything. It can't actually even hurt me because I've got two levels of shields and it's only got a laser that can pierce one and a beam that can't pierce any. So this is what's nice about upgrading your shields early on. It removes a lot of the threat that the earlier enemies uh, pose. They do get harder later on as you progress through the game, but getting two levels of shield upgrades as early as you can is never a bad idea. And there we go. He's taken out. Got some scrap. And now we have enough scrap to upgrade our weapons once. You can see it costs 35 scrap to upgrade that, and I have enough to buy one more unit of reactor power as well. So I'm going to do that. And what that will let me do is I can turn off my missile launcher and turn on my burst laser. So now I've got two burst laser twos. This means that every time they're fully charged, I will fire six shots at once, which is massively, massively powerful. It's really, really great. Um, and, perhaps even more importantly, I don't have to rely on my missiles anymore, which means I can save up ammunition for the end of the game when I may need them again. Um, burst Laser 2s are hands down my favorite weapon in the game. Um, there are other things that are more powerful, and other things that are more potentially game-breaking, but they're really reliable, they're relatively cheap, and they don't consume a lot of power. So I think they're just a really good all-around weapon. Anyway, let's keep jumping. Another empty sector. 
which is not a bad thing. Uh, there is an increased chance of getting enemy borders in nebulas, so you generally want to avoid that. Uh, once again, another empty sector. And I'm just going to keep jumping towards the exit at this point, because I'm about done with this area. Wow, we are hitting all of the empty sectors this run-through. <laughs> wow, that is four in a row. I've never, ne I've never managed to do that before. And here we are at the long-range beacon. Because it's in a nebula, there's no particular event that happens when you get to this beacon. If you get to a long-range beacon that's in regular space, there will frequently be an event that'll go on, but not in nebulas for whatever reason. Here we're given an option of jumping either to the Mantis Homeworlds, which is a very, very hostile sector, or a civilian sector, which is not. I think we're going to jump to the civilian sector. Let's just play it safe for this run. Here we are, we can see there's a little bit of nebula up here. Now the nice thing about nebulas, particularly in uh, non-nebula sectors like this, is that they delay the rebel fleet's advance. I think they basically cut it in half. So if you're careful about navigating through nebula in a sector like this, you can end up giving yourself a lot more time to explore the rest of it before the rebel fleet will catch up with you. I generally don't worry about it. I find that on easy mode you don't really have to do that, you'll still get more than enough scrap by the end of the game otherwise, especially since we got that scrap recovery arm. So let's just check out this distress beacon instead. Here we go, picking up another single life form on the surface of a moon. Found a lone survivor, and we're going to hire him. That's another human. Um, I would have preferred to get a mantis, that would have been great, but I'll take him, you know. Uh, there is never a reason not to have as many crew members as you can hold. Um, having eight is always good. And, oh, here we come across some slavers. Uh, they are demanding one of our crew members in exchange for them not fighting us, but <laughs> we have two burst laser twos. So these guys are not a threat. Now what I'm going to do here is, since... It's the same weapon, it has the same cooldown time, which means it will fire simultaneously. So I'm not going to worry about timing this out to pierce the shields like I was with the missile launcher. I'm just going to set them both to fire. One aimed at the shields, one aimed at the weapons bay. Between that and cloaking to dodge the missile, I will be very surprised if this guy does any damage to me. Well, I may have spoken too soon. He's going to get one more missile off before I can take out his weapons, but... That's okay. Alright, so we've done enough damage to him that he's offering a slave as tribute. Um, and he makes the argument that if we destroy his ship, we'll all die anyway, and that's true. Um, I feel bad not being able to save the rest of the slaves, but since I have no way of boarding his ship currently, there's not really anything else I can do. I have a full crew, so I'd have to dismiss somebody to take him on, but it might be a mantis, like I said, and I'd really like to get one of those on board. So let's see what it is. It's another Anki. I've already got two. Um, they're really bad at fighting, and at this point I only need more crew members for fighting, so I'm not going to worry about taking him. At least he's free. Um, and yeah, like I said, that last missile did hit, but that's okay. I'm going to send a guy over to repair that while I send the person in that room over to get healed up. Certain weapons will damage crew members inside the rooms they hit. Uh, missiles, some bombs, and lasers will generally do that. Beam weapons, aside from the anti-bio beam, will not damage crew members. It's just something to keep in mind. There's a store way up here near the nebula, but I don't have any scrap at the moment, so there's not really any reason for me to go up there. I'm also pretty happy with my current loadout. So, yeah, not a priority. And we're fighting another rebel ship, and... Same deal as last time. I'm going to target one burst laser on the shields, one on the weapons bay. And you can see, even though about half of those missed, it was still three hits, whereas previously we might have only gotten one or two. It's this huge volume of fire that makes uh, the burst laser twos so good. These guys are powering up their FTL, so... Just for the hell of it, I'm going to target their engines, you know, out of spite. And they're now they're trying to surrender to us, but they're rebel scum, so we're not going to accept that. And there we go. 
got more scrap, we got some missiles, and we got fuel, which is good, because we are running very low on fuel. I may have been wiser jumping to that, to that store after all, but what the heck, we'll see how it goes. Here we have a chance to aid a civilian ship. Of course we're going to aid the civilian ship. We're the good guys. Going to cloak to dodge that missile. And once again, we haven't done enough damage to completely take out all their weapons, but for whatever reason, the AI decided to turn off the missile launcher anyway. And then the fire that's presumably burning in there disabled the system as well. Fire not only damages crew over time, it will damage your systems over time. So if you let things burn in rooms that are occupied by gear, it'll slowly destroy that gear. And we get quite a bit of scrap, and ooh, a free weapon. I will certainly take that. We got some scrap and a weapon, the hull beam. I will show this off. Actually, I will show this off almost immediately because I have 117 scrap, which is enough to buy one more blip of reactor power. So we're not quite to the point where I can use all of my weapons yet, or all the ones I want to, but we're getting there. And next fight we get into, I'll show off the hull beam. Here we go, we are being attacked by pirates. So, the hull beam is a beam weapon. Uh, unlike other things that target single systems, beam weapons target in this line that you can, as I'm showing off, position wherever you want and kind of aim however you want. So it's generally in your best interest to aim the beam so that it intersects as many rooms as possible. It'll do, the, it'll do more damage the more rooms you're hitting. Uh, the downside of beams is that they tend to be very slow. You can see it takes longer to charge than any of my other weapons. And most of them don't pierce shields, or at least won't pierce more than one level of shield. So you have to wait for the enemy shields to be down before this will do any damage. So it's at this point that timing your attacks becomes very important. I'm actually going to wait for both of these weapons to charge fully before I fire at them. That way I'll be able to take advantage of the burst laser taking out their shields while my hull beam does damage to the ship. So now that they're both charged, I'm going to target my burst laser 2 at their shields, and I'm going to aim, but not fire, my hull beam. Now, the hull beam does extra damage to empty rooms, so I want to hit two empty rooms, I can hit their cockpit and their weapons bay. So that's four rooms, two of which will be double damage. So that's six total damage if this hits all the way. Now that I have it targeted, but I haven't actually clicked again to fire it, I'm going to unpause. So the burst laser goes through, and then I click to fire the hull beam. And so you can see the shield went down, the beam fired instantly, it hit all four rooms, and did a ton of damage. That's the right way to use beam weapons. And after that, it's really just a matter of wearing them down. The beam will take them out. I love beam weapons. They're easily the most fun ship-to-ship -ship weapons in the game. Uh, the hull beam isn't my favorite of all of them, but it's got a reasonably short cooldown time, and it can do a lot of damage depending on what the enemy ship's layout looks like. Now, we got enough script or uh, scrap there that I'm actually going to buy one more weapon upgrade, because now, if I do some creative power juggling... I can power both burst lasers and the hull beam. This is officially an end game weapon setup. I could go through the rest of the game with this and do just fine. Um, and I may just do that. It really depends on what other stuff we come across. Excellent. There's a store right there next to the exit, so I'll be able to stock up on fuel. So I'm just going to jump down here and see what's in this sector. Uh, let's see, trading one fuel for four missiles. Normally I would take that, because monetarily that's a really good deal, but we need the fuel right now, and I'm not even using my missile launcher, so... There's no point in taking that. So let's just go to the store instead. Alright, here we go. I am going to buy as much of the fuel as I can afford, which is actually not very much, as you can see. Uh, but that's okay, because what I'm going to do is, with that much fuel purchased, you can see I'm way ahead of the enemy fleet right now. So I should at least have time to jump up here and check out this distress beacon, and hopefully get some more scrap out of it. Uh, eh, 
this is an event where uh, these guys are out of fuel and they need some. Uh, we're running low, but I, I'm going to be buying more, so let's check it out. And there we go, I got 53 scrap. Uh, for two fuel, that's a really good deal. And look at that, there's another store up there. I think I have enough time to visit one more sector and that store before the Rebel Fleet gets to the exit beacon. Let's see if I'm right. And, of course, the sector that I jumped to is empty, but that's okay. Let's check out this store. Uh, here we have some drones, a crew teleporter, which I would love to have but can't afford, and, more importantly, some more fuel. I'm going to fix up my ship while I'm at it. And let's see if I can make it. Doesn't look like it. Maybe. I'm at least going to make it back to that store so I can buy the rest of the fuel they had. There we go. Three more fuel. Still not doing great on fuel, but I'm doing okay. Alright, we are definitely not making it to the exit before the Rebel Fleet gets there. But that's okay, because we are really, really well equipped right now. Here we go, fighting Rebel Ship. You can see this one's got three levels of shield. That is a lot of shield to punch through. It's also got a much bigger missile launcher and a couple other nasty-looking weapons. The Rebel Fleet is generally better equipped than the other ships that you'll come across in a given sector, uh, so they're very dangerous to fight. Um, thankfully, though, we've got a really good weapon layout. We have cloaking, and we have two shields, which is not ideal, but is better than nothing. So we're going to see how we do. Now, as I showed off earlier with the hull beam, I'm going to wait for all of my weapons to charge and then fire them off all in one big volley. Because that way, I get the maximum amount of damage out of the burst. I'm targeting both burst lasers at the shields because there's three of them, and I want to take that down completely so the hull beam can do as much damage as possible. And then with the hull beam, I'm going to target across these four rooms. I could target that empty room up in the middle and do a little bit more damage, but I'm more interested in taking out their systems than I am in destroying the ship as quickly as possible. There we go. You can see we didn't end up doing any damage to their systems with the burst lasers, but it took down the shield, which let the hull beam do its job. And now we're going to cloak to dodge that missile and wait for everything to charge up and do it again. Same deal as before. Both burst lasers on the shields, hull beam on the other four rooms. There we go. That's more like it. Oh, he took out our oxygen. But I have a spare Engi, and he will have that repaired literally within a matter of seconds. And just like that, I have taken down that ship. This is why I love this weapon setup so so much. It's so powerful and so versatile. You'll see the only reward we get is one unit of fuel, um, and then we have to jump away. Um, so it's really, you know, you don't get any reward from sticking around and fighting the Rebel Fleet. It's almost always in your best interest to avoid it. And here we are in another sector. Sector 5, and it's another friendly sector, so I'm going to jump around and see what's around. Here we have another rebel ship. You can see this one only has two shields. It's only got two weapons. It's not nearly as threatening as the one that we just faced. And at this point, unless I decide to drastically change my weapon loadout, you're going to be seeing pretty much just more of the same as far as uh, tactics go. Uh, I let him hit me there, which was a little stupid, but it's okay. I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, I have a spare Engi who can help repair. Uh, if you have multiple crew members tr working on a system, they will uh, repair it more quickly. So for something that's very important, it can be good to kind of double people up. Got some scrap out of that and some fuel. I'm going to send my engine room guy over to heal up. It's important to keep tabs on your crew's health just to make sure that they don't get too low to the point where like a stray bullet might kill them or... A, a random fire might kill them too quickly, um, or, or, God forbid, borders. Borders are bad news. Um, so it is important to keep tabs on things. 
Now I'm just going through my skills to check them out and also to remind myself who's doing what. Um, you can see uh, my pilot, has, my gunner has actually already leveled up once. It's full of green and slowly filling up with yellow. My pilot is getting there slowly. Um, my engine guy is getting there slowly. Um, let's check out this distress signal. Oh, it was a trap! But it's a Zoltan ship, and oh, I gotta remember to turn my second layer of shields back on. Um, yeah, this guy should be a piece of cake. That first volley will take down his bonus shield, <laughs> or not. Alright, we'll use the hull beam to take the rest of that out. And now we will just wait for all of our weapons to charge and do the same song and dance we've been doing. Alright. Burst lasers on the shields. And now, in this case, layout of the ship will really work in my favor because I can target four rooms, two of which being empty and one of which being the weapons bay means this guy is going to be taking a lot of damage. You can see they immediately offer to surrender, but nope. There we go. Blew him up in one volley. That is how much I like this weapon layout. We've got multiple distress signals to respond to, but I'm going to go to the lower one since I just randomly decided that. Uh, we find another deserted station. Hopefully this one won't be, you know, full of disease. Nope, it's just completely empty. Nothing there. That's okay. Here we're being offered to take part in a study by Zoltaren researchers. We're going to say yes. And because of that, we got some free scrap. It's a good deal. Let's go check out the store. Alright, we've got a lot of scrap, so I'm going to fix up my ship, buy all their fuel, and I could buy a crew teleporter, but I'm not really geared for ship-to-ship -ship combat right now. I could buy drone control, but really that 90 scrap is better spent on ship upgrades, which is what I will be getting to next time. Thanks for watching.